Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And did you know that Marvel Contest of Champions has reworked one of their game modes from less than two years ago? And they created a brand new game mode called Incursions that looks super fun and super interesting and creates whole new gameplay and sort of decision making abilities for the players. And did you know that when the streamers were playing it for the first time last night, other content creators like contest champion Brian Grant, people, developers of the game were in the chat talking to them about their game. Yeah, how awesome is that? Meanwhile, in Marvel Future Fight, we have to wait for CM Fragment to tell us that we got 10 extra tokens because they f***ed up about the squad battle. Cool. So, with my motivation to play Marvel Future Fight at an all-time low, I decided that I would give you guys the do's and don'ts for Mega Tier 2 tickets because I get a lot of questions and I've been getting a lot lately because we had two basically back-to-back. -back. We're in the middle of the second one, but this is the second back-to-back -back token event where you can redeem all 700 of your tokens for a Mega Tier 2 ticket. So a lot of people have Mega Tier 2 tickets and that's great and I want people to have more of them because then you can you know, tier two more characters and you can get more of those premium characters if you're a low spender, that's fantastic. But there are a lot of traps. There are a lot of trap characters that look good at first glance, or they look good if you're coming back to the game after a hiatus, or they look good if somehow you stopped watching my content in like July 2019, July 2020. Anywho, if you haven't watched my content in like six months and then you're suddenly like, I'm gonna mega tier two gambit, I'm here to tell you don't, don't do that, stop it. That's a horrible idea. Just like I tell the Netmarble devs that whatever they're doing with the game right now is horrible and they need to stop it, I'm here to tell you that there are definitely, definitely, definitely characters that you should avoid for the Mega Tier 2 tickets. I'm going to bust it down for you real quick here. Obviously, I've already covered Gambit. He's just not as good as he used to be. So just keep him at six stars. He needs a uniform to really bump himself up. The all defense down meta, the all defense down striker meta has made him basically obsolete because now the strikers can do what he does times 10. When Gambit came out, he was amazing because he was one of the only characters, one of the only characters that could do stage 40 or 50 of Cull Obsidian. Think about what I just said, stage 50 Cull Obsidian. We now can do stage 99 Cull Obsidian with freaking Mr. Fantastic. It's an absolute joke. World boss is, is way too easy nowadays. I know it might not be easy to you, but you just take that power creep that I just told you. A year ago, less than a year ago, Gambit was godly. Um, and, you know, the game has just changed so much in the last few months that he's just not worth it at all. It's, just, it's way too easy to power creep him, so dodge that. Another one that I see a lot of, should I Mega Tier 2 Weapon Hex? No, never, 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 ever Mega Tier 2 Weapon Hex. There's no reason to. She's a striker. She only needs to be level 60 and 6 stars to be a good striker to use Hex Claws. She does not need to be Tier 2. Um, basically, the rest of the X Gene subscription, besides Namor and one other, are basically also huge traps for the Mega Tier 2 ticket. Don't Mega Tier 2 Juggernaut. He came out at the same time as Sabretooth, and they were both basically, when they came out, they were basically Shadowland characters already. Okay? Uh, but then Sabretooth got a uniform that made him amazing, level 99 Proxima, yada, yada, yada. Juggernaut did not get so lucky, so Juggernaut is still in the dust there. So leave that man in the dust until he gets a uniform. Magic got a uniform, but she was not nearly as well received and as well worked on as any of the other characters from the Phoenix Five. She basically got the shaft along with Emma Frost, but unlike Emma Frost, she was way down. Like she got the same upgrade as Emma Frost, but Emma Frost was already way better than Magic. Magic is not good enough. Again, unless you love the character to bits, I would hard pass on Mega Tier Twing them. Same thing with Iceman, just not strong enough, needs a uniform. Um, You've also got Jubilee again, not strong enough. You're just if you're if you're Mega Tier Twing her, it's just for Shadowland and like mid level world boss. You're not gonna blow anything away. You're not gonna top tier any content. You're not gonna be scoring millions of points in squad battle. Yada yada yada. And then Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride is probably the worst character I've mentioned so far. She is just a leadership. She is a glorified leadership. That's all she's good for right now. Even in Shadowland, she is not that good. Uh, additionally, love that word. Mr. Sinister, I haven't seen much content on him. I think he can be good, asterisk, but we just have a lot of, we have a lot of mind damage. We have a lot of elemental characters for Ebony Ma, so we don't re really need an extra one, but you could do it because he is a villain. 
Um, I just don't think he's as good as the characters that I'm going to name in the second half of the video where I give you all the do's. These are all the obviously the don'ts. You go with the don'ts first so that people don't make a mistake midway through the video. Also, Emma Frost. Honestly, guys, Emma Frost is not that bad. She's pretty good, but there are just cheaper characters. There are even free characters like, for example, um, not Scarlet Witch, uh, Psylocke. There are, there are characters that just cost crystals or even characters that you can get for free that are as good, if not better, than Emma Frost at what she does. Yes, she can clear high stages of Ebony, Ebony Maw. whoop de doo A Tier 2 Apocalypse. Tier 2 Apocalypse could clear, Ebony, could clear Ebony Maw at high stages. It's not an impressive feat nowadays with the Striker Changers. And you know what? Emma Frost is not even that easy to play. You have to skill cancel really fast. And not to mention, even if you do use your mega tier two on Emma Frost. You have to buy her new uniform and then you have to get it to mythic. Good luck getting it to mythic, buddy. You're dropping thousands of crystals or you're dropping tons of cash getting a mega me mega mythic uniform rank up ticket. Highly, highly, highly discourage you from doing that. The last two characters that are sort of don'ts. Again, they're sort of don'ts. You could go ahead and do it, but I don't recommend it. Colossus and Victorious. They're part of the epic quests for Deadpool uh, uh strife and dr doom and mr fantastic um you can farm their biometrics it's easier once you get the extra quest that requires crystals the deluxe pack you can farm even more of their bios you know it, it takes a long time yes but that's the thing mega tier 2 ticket is expensive so if you don't want to waste your mega tier 2 ticket don't use it on victorious and colossus just suck it up you grind them out slowly like everybody else did uh not everybody else but you know a lot of players did um, and then you'll get there eventually, and then you'll thank me when you can use that mega tier two ticket on a character that I'm about to name. Also, don't, I'm just gonna throw this one out here, don't mega tier two the ultimates. Anti-Man, Nova, Blue Marvel, just don't do that. They're not that good anymore. Uh, they're okay, but they're just not that, they're, they're you know, okay is not a, a mega tier two worthy character. Mega tier two tickets are for like top tier characters, and they're not top tier. They're not even, they're not even the second tier after top tier. They need level 70, they need tier 3, they need uniforms, yada, 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 blah, 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 power creep, Marvel Future Fight. What's new? What's new? So, now that we got all the don'ts out of the way, let's talk about the rest of the don'ts. That's right, there are a lot more don'ts. So, I'm going to make it real, real simple for you. All of the biometric subscription characters are don'ts, except for the following. So, now I'm going to rank the existing characters, the, the remaining characters that I think are good options for the Mega Tier 2 ticket, and I'm going to try to rank them in order, um, not only in terms of their value, but also in terms of how easy it is to get them, because some of them are more difficult to get than others, obviously. Starting it off, we have Nick Fury. Now, I know Nick Fury is not as good as Luna Snow or Namor, but he is easier to get. He might not actually be easier to get than Luna, but he's easier to get than Namor. He's free. You just got to pay 2,500 crystals to get him. Uh, and then you can tier mega tier to him. And he's a really good mega tier two. He's one of the best supports in the game. He's one of the best leaderships in the game for heroes. So I think he's an awesome choice. But he's basically the three-way tie number one between Nick Fury, Luna Snow, and Namor. Obviously, if you have a six-star Namor, if you have a six-star Luna Snow, don't hesitate. Mega tier to them and then go get them to tier three. What are you doing? Why are you watching this video? There's no point. They're just god tier characters. They're just too strong. You will never regret it. Even with obelisks, these characters outshine other characters. It's embarrassing how strong they are. It's not embarrassing. It's, it's amazing how strong they are. So yeah, those three characters are basically like no questions asked. If you're going to mega tier to them, they're not going to lose value. You're getting tons and tons of value. I also think that Ghost Panther is an amazing mega tier too. He's getting better now because of squad battle. He's showing more value. And they're always going to be strong fire damage characters in Marvel Future Fight because the devs have an absolute hard on for Jean Grey. So we can, you know, he will continue to have value until the ends of the universe, until the game, you know, turns into Stardust Nova, whatever. Yeah, good character, strong character on his own, you know, um, as good, if not better than the characters I mentioned that you shouldn't mega tier to on top of the fact that he's an amazing support and he works on all characters. So he buffs heroes and villains. So, yeah, very, very good. The rest of the characters, so that that list of four, Nick Fury, you know, Luna Stone, Namor, Nick Fury, Ghost Panther. Those four at the top of the do list. They just no questions asked. Check, check it off. Uh, check mark. Get that uh, character to mega tier, two, mega tier two. That character to get them to tier two. The rest of these characters have asterisks involved, and I'll just go over them quickly. The first one, of course, and sort of like a tag team is Nimrod slash Sentinel and Spider Man twenty ninety nine uh, Miguel Ohaha. They're good characters, but you need to get the uniform. If you don't get the uniform, they're not worth the mega tier two. Very simply, 
just keep them at tier one. He's a good leadership. Sentinel's a good Shadowland clear. If you get them to tier two and you get their and you get their uniform, they're great mega tier two options because they're god tier characters. They're very very strong or near god tier. Uh, another one that I get asked questions a lot: Valkyrie. Now Valkyrie is a little bit more complicated. She's easy to get like Nick Fury. You can get a six star Valkyrie from the uh thor ragnarok legendary battle for 2500 crystals which is basically a mega tier a mega rank up ticket and then you can just bam slap a mega tier two on her but she is technically the weakest support in the game she's the weakest support because she has the least amount of stat buffs and she's the weakest character she's probably a little bit stronger than colson uh and although she applies to all allies and colson only applies to heroes Colson also gives 20% guaranteed crit rate. So that's really good in today's meta, especially for CTPs of Rage. So Valkyrie is honestly like Wave. So if if you think about it, instead of getting Valkyrie, you could just spend 1,500 crystals or whatever, 2,200 crystals. You could still spend less crystals to get a six-star Valkyrie. And in three months, you could get a tier two Wave. And tier two Wave is going to do almost the same thing as Valkyrie, except she doesn't apply to villains. So... If you really like villains and you love playing as villains, then, then Valkyrie has a little bit more value, but she's almost as low value as Wave. So would you Mega Tier 2 Wave? Probably not. If you have all the other supports and you have all the other characters I named, maybe you'd Tier 2 Valkyrie, but maybe you would just go play Contest of Champions uh, Incursions and you would just, you know, ignore this uh, advice altogether. Um, next up on the list, we have Sabretooth. I actually put Sabretooth ahead of Spider-Man 2099 before, or sorry, after um sentinel slash um nimrod again Sabretooth like nimrod and like spider-man 2099 miguel o'hara very good with the uniform average basically not mega tier two worthy without so those three characters if you have the mega tier two and you're going to get the uniform combo that shit if you're not going to get the uniform or you don't have the crystals to get the uniform save the mega tier two ticket next up sort of below them is crescent and crescent is just she's pretty good as a tier three so you would mega tier two her to make it easier to tier three her but if you're not going to tier three crescent don't bother mega tier twoing her she doesn't have value in that in between space she's a good six star leadership because the 60 percent damage to combats the physical damage not not all attack but that's it so if you're not going to tier three her don't bother if you are going to tier three her it's a decent amount of value then we have mystique now the reason why mystique is not higher on this list I'm not a hater. Don't worry. Just because I don't have her. She got big old titties. I know. The thing with Mystique is you can spend crystals. So that's always that's always the value proposition with a mega tier two. I cannot spend crystals to get Sentinel bios. I can spend crystals to get Mystique bios. I can spend crystals to get her at six stars. And then I can spend crystals repeatedly to buy her biometrics. So I will always be able to grind up more bios for these characters. I do not have the opportunity to grind bios for Spider-Man 2099 for um sentinel for those characters for nick fury so that's why she's lower on the list but in terms of power uh mystique is right up there uh she's ahead of ghost panther in terms of power mystique is technically you know right below nick fury um luna snow and namor she's very 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 strong and she has an amazing buff for all allies so yeah in terms of power level she's way up there but the fact that you can grind out her bios makes the mega tier two a little bit less consistent, not consistent, a little bit less efficient um, with on her. But it's still a good idea to mega tier two her if you want her and you already have those other characters that I mentioned or you want to skip them or you're just looking at raw power. Because if you're looking at raw power, skip Nimrod, mm, skip, Sp skip Spider-Man 2099, skip uh, Sabretooth, skip Valkyrie, skip Crescent. Um, and maybe skip Ghost, Pan Ghost Panther and then, you know, and then start to consider Mystique on that list. Uh, and then we have Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon's pretty good, not nearly as good as uh, Mystique, but good. Good for Lion's Conquest as well, if you like that PvP autoplay Barbie thing. And, um, you know, again, it's the, it's, it's the question of I can use my crystals on her, so I don't necessarily need to use the Mega Tier 2 ticket, but it's not a bad option. You're not, you're not going to end up with a bad character if you Mega Tier 2 Blue dragon and then the last but not least i haven't talked about this guy in a hot minute but he's actually not bad slapstick so again if you have all the other characters that i mentioned you have all the other uniforms that i mentioned and you want to make it tier two slapstick he's honestly not that bad he's a pretty half decent character if you build him for pve he can do pretty well he's a striker with all defense down and if you build him for pvp he's not top tier but he's like the tier underneath that and if they ever get their shit together with this game modes 
with game modes in Marvel Future Fight and they start banning characters properly and they start forcing you and restricting you, uh, Slapstick will be one of those characters to rise to the top of the PvP meta very quickly um, because he basically hyper dunks everybody who's not tier 3 um, besides Silver Surfer and Doctor Doom and maybe a couple of others. So, with that being said, I hope this list has helped you avoid the don'ts, then move on to the do's and do a sort of value comparison. Think about your crystals. Think about the Mega Tier 2 tickets. I don't know if Mega Tier 2 tickets are going to become more available. They have been recently, but that may just be a product of, you know, lackluster updates, low numbers of people logging in, and the devs trying to really encourage people to log in. I've never, in my five years of playing, I've never seen them do back-to-back -back Mega Tier 2 uh, token events to trade in. So this is a surprise to me but maybe something is coming on the horizon honestly there is uh there's there's a, a huge power gap between most characters uh between tier one and tier two so the mega tier two ticket is very valuable so that's why these videos are always important to do in order for players to get the most out of those mega tier two tickets because a lot of characters have basically like five percent of their potential unlocked at tier one but then bada bing bada boom once you hit that that tier two you make a tier to them they suddenly have 99 percent of their potential unlocked so hopefully this helped you out hopefully this saves you some bad mistakes and this you know puts you in a better position to make good decisions thank you so much for watching thanks for supporting me and i will see you in the next one take care